What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, me and my brother Logan are about to do the unthinkable. We are here today at WitchCon, a witch festival. You heard me right. We are going to, into a witch festival to share the light of Jesus to these people. And I'm here to challenge you guys today saying, look, we're called to be the light in the darkness. But if there's no darkness, how are we supposed to be a light? So we got to show up to the darkest places and spread the word of God. So with all that being said, guys, let's get straight into this one. All right, so what is your name, first of all? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Watson. Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. My name is JJ. Nice to meet you, JJ. So kind of, can you give us a little rundown on what this all looks like? Like, where did you start getting into spirituality and this whole thing? Well, I first started getting into spirituality in this particular path when I was in my teens. So back in the 90s, not we're dating myself at all, uh, but I was exploring my self-expression and finding that the religion that my parents and my family had just didn't feel right to me. So I went to a metaphysical shop and picked up my first tarot deck and played around with it and then have kind of evolved in my understanding of it since. Um, and people around here are going to come at it from a lot of different perspectives. You know, we call it the witch's market, but people are identifying as a lot of different things. Some people are pagan, some people are druid, some people are witches. It's an umbrella that covers a lot of different belief systems. Interesting. Okay. So with all that being said, um, so what do you do like here? What's kind of like your position? Because I know there's a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. Which is pretty interesting so what do you do specifically right here thanks for asking what i do at these shows is i do readings for people i will read um through tarot oracle pendulum and i read as an intuitive empathic person so you have different levels of people who read and it's a lot of it is self-identified a medium is often someone who's talking with people who are departed a uh, psychic is getting things from all sorts of different places uh, a lot of extrasensory sort of things so yeah. clairvoyance clairaudience clair there's a bunch of them um, for me i'm like the next step down from that basically so okay. i use the cards and the various tools as a jump off point they give me kind of a frame and then I see what imagery comes up, what colors are happening, what numbers are happening. And as an empath, I'm also getting a sense from the people that I'm in with. So um, a lot of you know their reactions, how they're talking, how they're feeling comes into play and guides what I'm talking to them about. My own readings are a lot about helping people find an empowered place to answer their own questions and move out of these struggles that they're coming to me asking about. And it can be anything from relationships to work struggles to life path questions to I just don't even know what's next for me. I feel totally lost. So a lot can come into play with that. And as a certified mindset and manifestation coach, I delve a lot into, okay, so what is it that you're thinking around this? What is it you're feeling? How can you get past that and move forward? And it's always a future focus even though I don't do predictive readings because I believe in free will. And I think by the time you've had a here's what your future is reading, it's already pretty much changed just by knowing it. Uh, there are other people who are amazing at those. I just don't, I don't mesh well with that reading style. Interesting. So, so where do you like get your power from to do all this type of stuff? And also like, what do you think's behind all of this? Like, what do you think's giving these people power based upon these practices and certain things and religions and all the element to like certain energies? And I know how some of how it works, but where does that power come in play to? And, and what do you do personally to hone that power? That's a really interesting question. So I'm pretty sure you've had deja vu, right? I have, yes. Yeah. Before. Pretty much all of us do. That is a form of psychic ability. Every single person we believe now is born with those extra sensories. You walk into a place and you look at a person and you get a vibe off of them, right? Or there's a certain house that you go by and you're like, wow, that place feels weird, right? Or you're in a store and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm really into this. I don't know why, but I am. With deja vu, do you think some of that, though, could be like you seeing dreams that have already come play in your life? 
Absolutely. Okay. It's a whole spectrum, like where it comes from. If you want to dive into that, it's, it's a conversation in and of itself. It's a huge study that's been done. But the reality is, is that we all have those abilities. We all have something extra besides our sight, our sound, our hearing, our taste. So like spiritual gifts? Yeah, they can be. In some people, they're a lot stronger. It's just another way of experiencing the world. Where it comes from is a lot about personal belief systems. Everybody finds their own way of kind of defining it. You know, psychology would talk about it as the collective unconscious or, you know, the energetic, harmonic, magnetic fields that we all have as being people who are an electrical circuit. Right. You can tap into that if you get really good at it. The same way you could tap into a wall socket. It's the same kind of thing. It's just about getting to the unseen side and trusting it. That's a huge thing, is you've got to trust what you're seeing. So yeah, just a, a lot of different elements and things that come into play with it all, but where do you th what do you think is going to happen when you die? Like, where, where do you believe you're going to go when you die? That is very individual. I think that is 100% for each and every one of us to answer for ourselves. I so you think that, so you believe that, you know, you determine where you go when you die? I think what you perceive is going to be entirely individualistic. Where we go is a question we've been trying to answer from the beginning of time. I personally believe in reincarnation. I think there is so much life force inside of us that the universe would never just let it all go, right? We know that energy is never created or destroyed, it's just transformed. I think that's true. I think that we come back around. I think there's amazing things that happen on the other side. I do believe that there's a veil between this side and the energy that has not been put back into a body yet. So do you basically believe like energy is God? Well, I believe in the universal law that states that all is one. So, so like, what makes you think reincarnation is true? What makes you think that's real? Have you ever had like an experience or seen anyone reincarnate into something like that? That would require being around for someone's death and then their birth and that, I mean, in a wide world with millions and millions and billions of people, it'd be really hard to be present for that. And that's assuming that they come right back around. I personally have remembered past lives. I've watched past life regressions happen with other people. That is a study that's been, a phenomenon that's been studied by psychologists and scientists that is getting more and more traction because there's just too many people who remember it to, believe that it's not happening but everybody has their own belief and I don't say anybody's is wrong what we believe is true for us and that's a beautiful thing so do you believe like all religions are true and have like an element of power in them I definitely believe that every religion has elements of truth all of them are powerful depending on how much belief you put into it I think it's important to find either a religion or a way of thinking a belief system that makes you feel empowered rather than fearful or controlled right. and I think the problem is when we get to a place where we have to convince everybody else that what we believe is true in order for it to be true for us I think that's where a lot of religions fall short is needing everybody to believe the same thing yeah so like for example if you were to enter you know the realm of Islam or Christianity or something like that they believe like people who don't, right, people who aren't walking in the same ways they're walking or aren't following like what they're following, certain people are going to go to hell for eternity. What do you think about that? I think that that's very true for them. I think it's probably a very scary way to live and it's definitely a religious belief that I grew up understanding and had family members who... So it's, it's true for them but not true to like you? Did not just... Did you just say that? In a nutshell, because that's the reality of the way the mind works. Whatever we perceive, whatever stories we tell ourselves, from religion to what's possible in our job. To so there are certain things that are fake, huh? Certain things that like aren't true, basically, is what you're saying. Like there's things that are true, but things that aren't. Would you say you believe that? I'd say that what we believe is what is true for us. And that is across the board in every aspect of life, not just spirituality and religion. What we believe and we truly believe wholeheartedly and accept as fact 
is true for us doesn't make it true for someone else because no one else has had our life experiences no one else has lived and become the person we've become so when everyone agrees on a type of religion even in that umbrella there are different ways that people honor it practice it express it and that you see in every every religion that you look at and every religion that you look at has certain things that they all agree upon so so for an example think about this if there's 10 people right and they're all lined up t and they're all going to run into a wall does it make it true for somebody just because they believe that the wall is not there but all 10 are running towards that wall what would you say to that i'd say dependent on who believes they're going to splat versus who thinks they're going to jump over versus who thinks they're going to go through that's going to be their reality and dependent on how much they believe is going to dictate the outcome what did she say Right, but if you have 10 people running into a wall and you know for a fact there's a wall there, someone might believe with everything in them that wall's not there, I'm not going to hit it. But the fact is that no matter what they believe, all 10 people are going to hit the wall because it's actually there. It's true that the wall is there. You see what I'm saying? I do. And it was not that many generations ago that everyone knew the earth was flat. Everyone knew that there was no, that you would just fall off the edge of the earth. Everyone knew that there was no such thing as electric lights. We had fire and that was it. So it's true that there's electric lights. It's true that you, like, you believe the earth is round. What if I believe it's flat? Does that mean it's flat just because I believe it's flat? Did he really say that? For you, absolutely. If your belief is strong enough, then it is absolutely flat for you. And what we believe, the, the truth of our world evolves all the time. It's constantly changing. Some people knew that there was no way that AIDS was ever going to be something that we could get past. Some people knew cancer was absolutely a death sentence and there was no way it was going to be different. Science, medicine, religion right. evolves all the time. So we discovered things, right? It's not like things change, truth change. It sounds to me like truth is something you discover, not something that you create. Like for an example, um, you were talking about how energy you believe like plays you know a big role in everything and all of what you guys do and stuff. Energy, according to the second law of thermodynamics, has always been expanding since a certain point, which proves there was an element at some point that started energy. So at some point, energy was created. So you could say and believe that like you know the universe is God, energy is God. We actually have scientific evidence that looking through, there was a famous man who looked through a telescope and he discovered that energy is always expanding. So there was a point in time where the universe was created. That's like a scientific fact. Right. And what was it created from? What sparked the creation? We, we define these things in ways that we can understand them in as much as we have the ability to measure, to explore, to think about. And yet people come up with new ways of thinking about things all the time. And then somebody studies it and then we make a new discovery. And then we have a new truth. And it's about what we let ourselves be open to as a possibility before we define what is true. Right, but I mean, one plus one equals two. There's no other way of getting around it. Like, you know, as much as you want to believe it could equal something else, it doesn't mean it does. That's just a fact. One plus one, no matter what anyone's truth is, it always equals two which shows that there is a truth to that. No matter what anyone want to believe, no matter what they think, it has to be true because it's true, not what you want to believe is true. Does that make sense? It makes sense, and yet there are people somewhere who are going to say one plus one doesn't equal two. Right. You can but that means you that their truth them. is false. That means they're wrong. It's not true. To them. It's not true. Their truth could be something that actually leads them away from what's real, what's true. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. So what I'm saying is that there could be a religion, there could be something that's true, that makes factual sense, that we discover, and there could be a lot of evidence for this, and it could be true, dismantling everyone else's beliefs and what they think and what they practice and what they think, right? Because there can only be one truth, right? Like you could, you could die, Right? And say like, you know, for a Christian, you could die a Christian if Christianity is real. And maybe someone like you, and I'm not saying this is like, be mean or anything like that or to insult you. 
The sad reality is that you would be going to hell for all of eternity because that's true. And if that, if what they believe is true, then that's your eternal destination. No matter how hard you want to believe it, no matter what you want to know or say, that's that's true. So what what would you say to like that? I would say no way to know until we're there. And I get to live this life the way that I choose to, in the way that makes me feel the best I possibly can, to be the best person I can, best mom I can. And that's all any of us can do, is what we, the best we can with what we have right here and right now. And who dictates what is truth is us. We each have the power to choose what our truth is. Whatever universal truth is, honestly, we're not going to know until we get to the end of this trip. Right. But what if you're living your truth and it ends up sending you to hell because you thought it was true, but when it really wasn't? Like, I'm going to share, I'm going to share a little bit what I believe because, I, you know, I think it's only fair. You've shared a lot. I believe, so I believe inside of the Bible, right? I'm sure you believe there's elements of power inside of the Bible. I believe everything inside of the Bible, everything taught inside of Scripture is true. I believe that Jesus really did come, and we have historical documentation. Um, we have archaeological discoveries that proves this is true. Jesus really did come. All of history is oriented around the time periods B.C. and A.D., meaning before Christ, a Greek word that means after Christ. So Jesus really came. And I believe that God sent His one and only Son, Jesus, down here to die for our sins, to make a way for us to have eternal life, right? Because we've all sinned. We've all made poor choices. I don't believe, like, you, you know, being a good person means you're going to have a good destination or a good life or a good experience or you're going to reincarnate into something else. I believe only Jesus can save you because the w Bible says the wages of one sin is eternal death. So God had to, knowing that there had to be a sacrifice, had to send Jesus down here to die on the cross for our sins. And I believe, like, all this type of stuff, everything you guys are involved with, I believe it's not just... It's not energy like you think. There's spiritual things happening because I believe there's a spiritual realm. That, and like when you said familiar spirits, those are inside of the Bible, mediums. What they do is they call up familiar spirits, right? Yeah. But those familiar spirits aren't actually ghosts like you think. They're demons that take on the functions of dead people after studying people for generations. I believe a lot of this type of power that you guys are tapping into comes from demons and that the devil is trying to mislead you guys and to a, send you to a dark place so I'm just here to share Jesus with you and I just want to tell you that he is the way the truth and the life and you might believe differently now but you're gonna see one day because the Bible says one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and I'm telling you there's no other way he's the only way to heaven well, I am so glad that you have such a powerful belief I really truly am I, am, I can see how deeply you hold these beliefs. I am really, really glad that you are so passionate that you want to share it and you want to get that out there. And I appreciate you sharing the message. Well, I just want to share because I care about you. Like I'm here at you know WitchCon because I want people to know Jesus because I believe there's a lot of people here that are going to sadly end up going to hell. And I don't want anyone to go to hell for eternity. I know the devil uses this stuff and tarot cards and the energy and spiritualism that you guys are tapping into, crystal manifestation, all of that, New Age psychic readings. These are just demons inside of the spiritual realm. As you cast these spells, you're accessing power that the devil is giving you. So it's not your power. It's nothing you can do. It's the devil so by your actions. You if I showed up at your church and I offered to give the tarot readings to people, yep. how would that react? How would people react to that? Would that be a welcome thing? No, it would clearly be, it would be a demonic thing. Okay. Do you see how there's some parallels in what you are doing right now to what I just recommended? What do you mean? I mean, do you see how coming here and having these conversations and yep. recording this in a place where we've gathered to express mm -hmm. our unique spirituality I'm expressing without mine. without being in anybody else's space is the same as me walking into your house of worship where you are expressing your religion and your belief and getting in touch with what is true for you and offering my viewpoints right but would be you want to people disrespectful. which which is when it walk into the house of worship to do anything that means like caring about people 
it's telling you a lot of these people, witches, try to cast spells on Christians. They go after Christians because they preach the truth. I right? have yet to meet a single witch who has ever cast a spell on a Christian. Oh, I've heard many time. stories of met many. And I have talked and engaged with many witches, many self-identified witches, who have never done exactly what you're saying. So your anecdotal evidence is your truth. My actual experience and engagement with people who hold this religious belief is my truth. Right. Okay. So the reason why we're here today, mm -hmm. right, we came here, is not to, you know, cast you guys down or to do anything mean or brutal to anyone. We're here because, right, you don't see any other religions, you know, all these other people coming into places like this say, hey man, I just want to tell you that, you know, this is the truth. We genuinely are here because we care about you guys. Right. Like, I'm not trying to insult you and or anything. we don't walk into your homes or your places of worship peddling right. our religion. Right, but we see, we see it in a different light. I we see it that. as your eternal destinations on the line. You know, people need that. to, and the reason we're filming it is so other people go out and do the same thing. Well, I really hope that they don't, to be honest with you, because I hope that your belief is so powerful for you and so fulfilling for you and unlimits this life for you so you can live your best self for yourself without having to put it on other people. Because we each get to make a choice as to what we want this life to be. And I understand, I understand that you are doing this out of love, that you want everyone to experience the paradise, the peace, the majesty that is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, I want people to be saved. I get that. But you can't make their choices for them. You can share your message, but you can't make their choices for them. And coming to an event like this, where we very rarely get to gather in this, in this kind of group, and trying to tell us what your truth is in the hopes that we will accept it, is a bit disrespectful, to be honest with you. We are here expecting ourselves. And while your face is beautiful and you definitely, you believe to the core of yourself to be here to share this, to report it, you don't get to make somebody else's choice for them. You can inform, but you don't get to make their choice. Well, I'm not here to make you make any choice. I'm just here to offer you the, offer you the choice for you to make. I'm here to give you a choice to make. And if you want to reject it right now, that's fine. I just pray for all of you guys. I pray that you guys make the right choice. I appreciate it. Because I've had experience with some of this stuff, and I know how the devil can get into these things. I know a lot of this stuff has nothing to do with like what you guys actually think. It. I'm not here to insult you guys. But as I said, even energy has a course. You see plants, the process of... Um, germination, the process of, um, what's it called, where plant, plants start to sprout and grow, that's energy running its own course, but it shows that there's something behind energy, there's something that's guiding energy, making energy do things, right? I believe that's God, and God's outside of space, time, and energy. Right, and your religion, and the Bible, and all of the historic evidence that led to your belief system now, was predated by many of the beliefs and religions that are expressed here. And all of those people lived their lives without knowing Jesus, without knowing God. They worshiped their own way and they lived just as fulfilling lives as we get a chance to do today. So I understand your truth. I appreciate you sharing it. I appreciate you listening to my truth. And I think we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. Okay. That's fine. So before I leave, because I'm going to leave and let you get back to your thing. And I, I really appreciate your time and all that. I just want to share one thing. So my sister, there was an instance in her life where she actually died. Literally died. When she died, she got taken up to heaven and went to and saw Jesus. And Jesus said to her, after she had died, he's sending her back because she has a purpose here in this world. So I'm not sh I don't know if you're going to believe that or how you're going to take it. I just can tell you, I know for a fact it's true, that Jesus was the one who she met when she died. She didn't get reincarnated in anything else. It was Jesus. I just want to tell you, I believe Jesus 
It's the way, the truth, and the life. And that He loves you and He cares about you and He has a purpose for you. So I just want to share that with you. But with all that being said, I, I really appreciate your time and uh, God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with... Uh, Rune. Rune? Yes. Rune, nice to meet you. Yes, so um, kind of if you could give me the rundown of a few of these pieces. I've never seen any of this really, so... You just give me a quite a lot of stuff, a good variety of stuff. So yeah. mainly do a lot of ethically sourced um, animals, but also like bones. So that's what we have here. Um, and ethically sourced meaning that the animal is not killed for the purpose of art. Um, most times the animal was found um, already dead and then cleaned up from there. So and then um, I also do a lot of spell kits and spell ingredient work. So I put it in candles as well as um, kits that people can take home and do themselves. Uh, and they can also have them in jar format as well. And then a lot of these are just a lot of decorative pieces. So nothing special there. And over here we have spirit boards. Um, so they are a little fancy. They're sparkly, but they do work. I've used them. Um, so if you do believe in that, they work as well. And then these are what I call my tarot boxes. So you can actually pull them out here and store your little crystals, tarot cards, whatever you can put in there. And that's pretty much the rundown of, of some of the stuff that I make and offer for people. So just a variety of, of witchy items and, and spell ingredients. That's cool. That's cool. So would you say then, uh, I don't know if identify is the right word, but you consider yourself to be a witch then? a good a good way to to phrase it yeah okay i was just asking because i know there's like wiccan and then witch but i've never been sure of what the difference is you I know think, um as far as i go and some people might say different but i think wiccan itself is more of like a organized religion or a practice whereas i call myself a witch but i kind of piece together my own things and just build my own practice without really following any set rules or guidelines Okay, cool, cool. So, so what got you into all of this, if you don't mind me asking? I have honestly been into horror since I was a young kid, um, and so that's where it started. Uh, but then as I got a little older and started, you know, playing around with Ouija boards, as we probably all did, um, it started getting a little bit too real for me. And so, therefore, that's how I got started into witchcraft and then creating things for other people as well. That's cool. So, so what is horror? I've never actually uh, heard that term before. Like scary movies. Oh, um, nice. yeah, yeah, like horror movies and stuff like that. So, yeah. Cool, cool. So you said this was a Ouija board? Yeah, this is a Ouija board, um, also called spirit board. Spirit board, right, um, that's right there. Yeah, you know, if you ever went over to your friend's house um, in, in grade school and you stay the night at the sleepover, usually someone pulled out a Ouija board and then you all, you know, put your hands on it and usually it was your friend moving it, but... Some, like myself, do believe that you can communicate with spirits on them. Oh, okay. So it's like, so you, whatever you do to make this thing move in a certain way, is it, is it demons that are speaking to you, like spiritual uh, statements about yourself or, or spirits, you said? Spirits yeah, that are... Spirits. Some people believe it's demons. Some people believe it's ghosts. Um, but essentially, you just ask questions of who you think you're speaking to, and they would answer by spelling out the word or... Um, yeah, just spelling it out. So, uh, what, what's the what's the most interesting thing you've been told by using one of these particular items? I would have to say the most interesting and obviously thing I don't believe is that by using one of these, I am inviting the devil into my house. Really? Yes. Wow, that's wild. That's pretty, wild. Pretty wild. So, if you uh, heard that about the devil, then I gotta ask, what do you think about Jesus? I mean, I am not a big believer in Jesus, um, but I also can't say that he's not real. So I'm kind of impartial to it. Okay, okay. So you've never had like any sort of encounter with Jesus having to do with not witchcraft or anything? To prove was Jesus. Really? No, share with us. Share with us. We're, I want to hear. I mean, well, I've had a lot of, I would say, spiritual encounters, but never anything where anything has claimed to be Jesus or anything like that. So. Okay, okay, yeah. So... What is what do you use some of these things right here then for? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, so these are these are spell kits. Um, so essentially, there's different things you would do a spell for. So, for example, just to name off of a few, a black would be a protection spell. So if you feel like you need extra protection, you would 
set your herbs up on like a fire safe place and then you would burn the candle and set your protection and tension. Um, and so you would do that for, for different things. So if you need like a little pick me up, um, you're just feeling kind of down and you need a little bit of energy, you would probably burn a yellow candle. Dang, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little bit of something for everything, but it's all your mindset and, and the intentions you set with them. Okay, cool. So, so then as a witch, you said, yeah. um, what do you feel like your purpose is? I guess I have to ask, cause all of this is like, seems to have power, right? Yeah. So like, what would you say your purpose is as a witch? Uh, this answer is going to differ for everyone, um, but my purpose is to help others on their own spiritual journeys um, and to also learn about this stuff um, and, and help themselves out on their journeys. Okay, okay. So, like, do you, where do you think the power comes from? Because, like, obviously there's spirits that are moving that stuff. You get all, I'm sure you hear all types of stuff. And then this is, like, there has some ability for it to, like, manipulate. Not maybe manipulate is the wrong word, but, like, change the circumstances in somebody's life to give them a certain outcome where would you say like that power whatever it is is coming from if you had to define it yourself the power comes from you so you are the power so from like from inside yourself yeah you are the power the witch is the power these are your tools okay, yeah. okay so then like you don't think that the spirits really have anything to do with well, yes i mean i'm just talking about like in general like yes. okay these i mean the power in and of itself is is you okay dang that's crazy that's crazy so how like where do you think this came from like how did you discover that you can use this stuff to actually like help people well witchcraft has been around for a very very long time um but it's just reading a lot of research the internet is very helpful books um and learning from other witches okay so like do you talk to like then like a godlike figure every single day to like like, can you know stuff about people just from, uh, like, playing around with this or just, like, you wake up and, like, in a spiritual state? Like, how does that all work for you? I personally um, don't or can't do any of that. Some people might say that they can. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's a very internal practice. So um, think of it more like meditating and learning things through your meditation. Okay, cool. Huh? These are all spells. Cool, cool. Right. Well, I guess I feel like I mean you're really you seem like a really wise person. I guess I could share some of my uh, experience. So, um, when I was 18 years old, I actually uh, I sat down with a man of God, right? And for a couple of hours, I had uh, visions from Jesus. And, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was amazing. But he came to me and uh, told me things about my life. And uh, he showed me in the womb how, like, when I was formed as an egg, that Satan, like, tried to crush me, but he saved my life. And he showed me they had a purpose for my life and all of this different stuff. But um, I didn't really know what any of that meant. Like, I grew up in a Christian home, right? A lot of us have. Yeah, um, so, yeah so, I mean, you know, but I, I, but I realized that, like, the church couldn't save me, right? Like, and I never saw power, like, even this, we, we, like, we both can admit, like, there's power in this, right, for sure. And so I never saw uh, what power looked like. But um, after this encounter, you know, I kind of, like, had a deeper, like, desire for spirituality. And, uh, but I didn't, like, repent of the wrong things I was doing, right? I didn't repent of sin. I just kept living, like, in the same, like, bad premarital relationships, like, making bad decisions, living in bad habits. So I ended up one day, uh, my mom, right, because she was a Christian, uh, she invited me into my pastor's office, and uh, he just asked me to say, I don't know if you've heard the sinner's prayer, but it was like basically saying, like, invite Jesus into my house to, like, make a tree house, whatever. <laughs> so uh, I said, that I could not say that prayer. I began to try to say it, and I could not say it. And so my mouth locked up, and uh, as he was asking me to say it, I just screamed at him, no, and I, like, started cussing. And, like, this being started to speak out of me. Like an actual, like, I think it was, a, it was really a demon. It started to speak out of me. And it was, like, very angry at this pastor. And it was, like, cussing and saying stuff. And so the pastor, like, came around the table. And I, like, I, I could feel, like you said, it's the power's in you. I could feel energy in my body, like, freaking out as he was walking towards me. And so every time he used the name of Jesus, like, the demons freaked out. They were, they were terrified. And so he didn't end up casting this demon out of me, but I met a man of God. And uh, 
he ended up like casting all of these demons out of me and they were all connected to like sin so like the wrong things that we do that's like passed down habitually through your ancestry goes back generation after generation after generation and i was like literally having demons removed from me because of the sin of my own ancestry it was wild so cast those out of me and i had this like thought in my head while this was all happening like man like if these demons are afraid of jesus and like they're in me and they're harming me then like i need to give my life to jesus and so during this time uh man of god he prays over me says this last demon won't come out his name was belial i don't know if you're familiar with that name belial and so uh he was like one of the stronger ones in me and so uh he just he says look you got to let this thing go you've identified with this for so long like it's wicked so pulls it out casts it out in the name of jesus I, for the first time in my life, I could, like, see love in people's eyes. Like, these people hung out with me, didn't even know me for, like, 10 hours of the day just to, like, help me. And so I was like, man, if this is what the love of Jesus is, I need this. So he prayed over me. I started speaking in tongues. I don't know if you've heard about that or seen that. It literally just came out of my mouth. I couldn't control it. And so I had a hand that I had fractured near the growth plate when I was 13. And my hand didn't grow for a year. The doctors didn't believe me. And so this man of God, I asked him to pray for my hand. And so he laid hands on me, prayed, and I watched my hand stretch out and grow to the size of my other hand. And so I couldn't even, like, feel it, but I could see it. So I was freaking out. So I just was, like, in love with Jesus. So the next day, I went and uh, I threw, like, I heard God's voice in my head, like, the way you can hear. Like, I heard God's voice in my head, and he told me that, Logan, like, you have to throw out your weed now or it will become a problem later. So after that, like, I just started having dreams from God. He started speaking to me. And so now I'm a man of God. I hear from God every day. Like, I'm connected to the Spirit, but it's through God. Like, I hear the right things. I don't work with Satan to do things that are not of God with demons because, like, a lot of, like, this stuff you see here, Satan uses this stuff. I think we're good. I think, I think that uh, this is a little much. Um, oh, you want to hear the rest? No, I don't want to hear the rest. I think we're good. Okay, well. It's kind of extremely disrespectful to come up to someone's uh, area of business and then just be like, oh, yeah, well, Oh, no, I was just, I just wanted to have a conversation about, okay, yeah, well, God bless you. Have a good day, guys. So, yeah, guys, you see, like, demons begin to manifest when you talk about the truth. Um, I just wanted to have a conversation and share, but she was freaking out. So, we're going to keep walking around. Um, I don't know if we have time, but just know that, like, when you start to speak the truth, demons will manifest the first lady. She actually, actually responded really well, but I tried to get into, like, okay, Satan's using this stuff. She lost her mind. So, again, guys, like, I actually had love for that lady. Like, I wanted to share the truth with her. And so, but when I started saying that I was a man of God, like, she started freaking out. So, like, I could see the demons in her eyes literally manifesting. And so, like, I had the love of Jesus. I tried to go in slow. But as soon as I said that, like, yeah, so, like, demons are real. And, like, this stuff right here is witchcraft. Satan tries to use it to demonize people. She couldn't, I didn't even get into anything deep. Like, I stayed on the surface. And so, like, I could already tell now, like, the news is going to go around. We got to leave. But we're running out of time to record. So we only have so much memory on what we're using to record. So, but, yeah, like, we want to share faith. We want to get more into this stuff. But it's hard because, like, the demons are on notice. So that was a really good interview. But I got to go in, like, in disguise. Like, Jesus says in the Bible, that he, sin, that he sends us in as sheep amongst wolves. And to be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. And so now we probably like, like they're watching us. We seem like we were in there for no good reason. But we're just trying to have conversation. Like, we're just trying to talk to people about Jesus and lead them to him. So I'm talking a lot. But you guys saw, I mean, if you looked around, like it's an intense. Like people are watching us now. They're, they're on edge. They're on guard. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the work of Jesus. So, it, well, honestly, it's not scary at all. Like, don't be afraid of Satan. Like, you saw, the demons in her trembled because they understood that I had the power of God in me. And once she became aware of what the demons already knew, they freaked out and they were able to manifest through her. So, all glory and credit to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So, in Jesus' name, we'll turn it over to JJ. All right, guys, that's going to end today's video. Wish we could have done more, but... We lost memory on this um, device we are using as well as the weather just it started pouring down rain randomly and the weather's just been terrible all day. But hey, we got the opportunity to go in, interview these people and talk to them about Jesus. And this is the work that God is calling us all to do, guys. We got to go to the dark places because if not us, then who? If not now, then when? If not where? Or if not here, then where? So we're just out here trying to do the work of God and save souls. 
all this witchcraft, all this new age spiritualism, guys, I promise you it's a dead end. It's not going to lead you anywhere like you think except hell. Demons are messing with these people and they, trust me, they think it's fun. They are leading people to hell every single day. But yeah, guys, with all that being said, um, if you guys want to support the ministry on here, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments about this one. Share this to a few friends. Um, now, I just opened up memberships, so if you want exclusive access to perks, be a member, join, if that's what you feel the Lord's leading to you to do. But yeah, you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless you.